bouncing back and getting back on the board, the Sharks. Oh, that oh. is incredible strength from oh. Beeston Tawarira. Unbelievable strength. Breslad was, you climbed high in the sky to take this kick off. Look at that, up he goes, over the top he goes. And there the Beast has got him in an absolute gymnastics hold. Whoops him back down. Oh, that's just brilliant strength. Unbelievable strength. And welcome back to the Canadian Rock. This is Jamie Gray coming at you. And uh, as you guessed it, we've got a very special guest today. We've got two special guests. Had a bit of a roundtable discussion with friend of the pod, Doug Frazier. He was uh, happy to join us and we we're happy to have him back. And we also got uh, 2019 Rugby World Cup winner, 10 Day the Beast, Metwarara. I know I said that wrong, 10 Day, I'm sorry. Uh, when we chatted, he spent a couple minutes trying to teach me his name and finally just let, laughed and said, you know what, that's, that's good enough, that's close enough. Anyway, I apologize because I know I'm not saying that uh, properly, but there's a nice, if you're on YouTube, there's a beautiful picture of Doug uh, charging up the field in his RC gear, and there's a, a, a nice picture also of 10 Day with the uh, <laughs> World Cup and his gold medal. And just all smiles as he was during our uh, during our conversation. Before we get to that, though, we've got uh, our ways that you can always uh, jump in contact with us. We're on Twitter at Canadian Rock. We're on we're on the gram, the underscore Canadian underscore Rock. Facebook at the Canadian Rock, and email if you want to contact me, the Canadian Rock at gmail .com. As always, I know you're watching or I know you're listening, but make sure you're clicking follow. Make sure you're clicking subscribe. Uh, and to any of our platforms, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Google Podcasts, and CastBox. So make sure that you do that. And uh, we did put, place an order for some hoodies. And if you're on YouTube right now, there's a picture of the hoodie. And they've gone fast. I've only got a few left. So if you're interested, send me a note. Uh, contact me. Let me know. And uh, we'll make sure if we have your size available that we'll, uh, we can get one ready for you. So we're going to move on to some rugby news right now. It's uh, it's been a it's been a pretty neat week. Rugby Canada, if you haven't noticed, they've been uh, playing a lot of their old matches on YouTube. Uh, some of them they have commentary from some of the players. Great to watch. Uh, great to sit around with uh, with some with some friends and enjoy reminiscing some of those games. Some of them from the '90s. Some of them from you know 2014. Some of them from you know the early 2000s. So it's uh, it's pretty interesting to watch to see that happen. Uh, if you have a chance, if you're if you're lucky of you know TSN two or maybe you've got a streaming pass, um, but Super Rugby it's been it's been really fun to watch. The New Zealand those New Zealand matches have been really great. Just on the weekend, Crusaders over the Highlanders. I think it was a forty to twenty score for the Crusaders, but the the game was much closer than that. The Crusaders ran in uh, fourteen points over the last like five or seven minutes as uh, as the Highlanders were trying to push for a tie or or, or the win. But it was a it was a really entertaining game. Lots of lots of great ball movement. Lots of great set pieces. If uh, if you haven't had a chance to watch, I apologize for giving up the score. But it was a great match. Uh, the other one was Hurricanes over the Chiefs. Uh, poor Chiefs. They're I think they're zero four right now. They're definitely missing our uh, friend of the pod, Tyler Arjon, who's uh, who's off in France right now. You know he's doing that self isolating thing before he can start training with his club, to, uh, the Castres. And we're looking forward to him because I believe they're starting early August. So get a chance to watch him. And I believe Taylor Preparis is over there, maybe with the Olympique. Uh, but it'll be nice to see those two guys, uh, you know, locking, locking horns and going into battle. Uh, for Super Rugby this week in New Zealand, it'll be interesting because Dan Carter is making his return to play. Uh, he's a longstanding member of the Crusaders. He left after 2015 World Cup, went to England, went to Japan. But now he's back. But he's playing with the Blues. And I'm, play, I'm pretty confident that he's in the lineup for this weekend uh, with the Blues. And, his, of course, his debut will be against his old club, the Crusaders. So that will make for uh, that will make for some fun watching. That'll make for some uh, antics on the field, I imagine. And then the other, the second match will be the Hurricanes and the Highlanders. So far, the Blues and the Crusaders, the only two undefeated teams, and uh, it'll be an interest, interesting match for sure. Over in Australia, they they started up on the weekend. Uh, Reds Reds ran up over the uh, the Waratahs, and the Brumbies beat up on the Rebels. So uh, Rugby Australia is getting back in the swing of things as well. And this weekend, the Rebels host the Reds, and the Waratahs are hosting Western Force. Those games are also on TSN for our Canadian viewers. Um, just make sure that you're you're you know PV, setting your PVR for those games because they're all they're all on two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, if you're working shift work, maybe you're just getting in, you can watch it live. That's great. But uh, 
my PVR set and I watch them on the, on the weekends in the morning. So uh, get up, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your, your bowl of Fruit Loops or whatever you have for breakfast and, and enjoy the match or save it for later and crack a couple of beers. But speaking of Super Rugby, some interesting news. Uh, there's some rumors being leaked out in New Zealand that they're planning on leaving uh, the current Super Rugby setup, uh, leaving the Sanzar setup. Uh, in favor of a trans-Tasman contest. So basically it would be, you know, the five New Zealand clubs. It would be, I believe, five from Australia and potentially a, a team or two from the Pacific region. Um, what that does, when that takes place, I'm not sure. It, there's just very brief information that just came out within the last 24 hours. Um, from what I've read, and I could be wrong, but Sanzar will continue running the rugby championship between New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, and Argentina, uh, but will not uh, be running the super rugby aspect of rugby there. So not sure how this is going to play out. Does this mean that uh, South Africa will be making the move to Europe? Uh, is that, a, you know, is this a precursor to that move happening? Uh, time zones match up more uh, effectively, I guess, and efficient, efficiently for South Africa to make that happen. It could be good for them. Uh, but will it deteriorate the play of rugby in Super Rugby by losing the South African squads? I don't know. Uh, basically, it's a waiting game, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, well, it'll be interesting. Uh, it'll be. It could be a huge shakeup for those uh, for those clubs playing uh, down in the Super Rugby. But coming up next, this is uh, I think what you want to see. We've got, as I said. Friend of the pod, Doug Frazier, uh, very gracious guy, superstar wing for Old Glory DC. He's got a handful of caps for Canada. I'd love to see him back in that red jersey, um, you know, carving up the pitch with his speed and his footwork. He's got lightning feet. He's got great evasive skill set. Friend of the pod, excellent character, great all-around guy, just happy and, and enjoying life. Doug is coming up. And along with Doug, we have Tendai the Beast Matuarira. And Tendai was uh, we were fortunate enough to get him on the beast. He's played 117 caps for South Africa. That is amazing. Um, let alone at the proposition, just 100 caps for any country is historic, uh, and 117 is just uh, remarkable. 159 matches uh, in Super Rugby. 2019 Rugby World Cup winner. He also played in World Cup events in 2011, 2015. But you know, not even a year ago, this guy was walking off the pitch with that Rugby World Cup and his gold medal around his neck, and just very uh, amazing circumstances. You know, beating up on Wales, beating up on England in the finals. Yes, sir. And uh, the only the only loss they went through was uh, New Zealand in the uh, the opening stages, and from there they just said, you know what, let's 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 carry this thing all the way through, and they did. He's also, fortunately, he was a member of uh, the South Africa squad playing against the Lions. He played for the Barbarians. One of the fiercest props you've ever seen. One of the strongest men <laughs> probably ever to take the pitch in rugby. But just in my, my brief encounter with him, what an all-around great guy. Great sense of humor. Uh, big, hearty laugh. And you can tell he just loves life. And he's looking forward to his new adventure with Lindy uh, as the CEO there, and also, you know, maybe back next year with Old Glory a little bit, uh, talked a little bit about coaching role, and uh, we'll see where that leads. But uh, Tende and Doug, very fortunate to have you guys on, and for my listeners, uh, enjoy the conversation, kick back, crack some beer, and uh, mm -hmm. have, a, have a good time listening to this part. All right, welcome back to the Canadian Ruck. We have friend of the pod on for a second is uh, Doug Frazier, and we also have Tende the Beast, Mm, Terraria. <laughs> Terraria. No, it's all good. You try. Yeah, I, I, I did try. <laughs> so before the pod, everybody, uh, I was, I was, we were a uh, little nervous to try and say it, Ten Day's name, and he said just to say the beast. And uh, he's been trying to teach me, but you know I'm kind of old, and you can't teach an old dog new tricks sometimes. I guess. So. All right, let's jump right in here. So Ten Day, we're, we'll start with you. 2019 Rugby World Cup, what an amazing time for South Africa and your club. It was amazing to watch. Um, unfortunately for Canada, we came out pretty bad on that match between you guys and, and our boys, but it was a, it was a fun match to watch. As, talk to us about your experience in Japan on and off the pitch. I mean, you only lost once to New Zealand, but you, you dominated everybody else. You made England look like a high school team in the finals there. Talk to us about your experience. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Japan for, for me was probably the most awesome experience I ever had in my career. I think 
you know, from the moment when we got there, you know, we were the first team to arrive. So it was a tactic of ours to kind of try and acclimatize and get used to the conditions before everybody else. So, you know, we got there pretty early and we played that warm-up game against Japan before the World Cup. And, uh, you know, it, you know the, the people there were so welcoming. They made us feel very comfortable and, uh, you know, they went out of their way to do so much for us. So, uh, you know, it was... They have for you know for foreigners and you know how much they just want you to enjoy their country. So you know from that point of view, I really enjoyed you know mixing and mingling with the locals and got to learn so much you know about Japanese culture. And then uh, yeah, obviously on the field, you know it was uh, you know um, quite you know, incredible for us to to achieve what we did. And uh, it didn't it, it wasn't all like you know um, all uh, pretty you know it was it was like a, you know. Um, uh, Tough stuff to the, to the World Cup, you know, obviously losing to, to New Zealand. I think it was not in our plans, you know, for, for us to kind of start that way. We really were proud of that, that game against New Zealand as a, you know, as a game for us to build momentum into the World Cup. So it was like, you know, this is a final kind of before, you know, um, you know the actual final. So it was a dress rehearsal for us. And uh, yeah, you know, then we stumbled and uh, it kind of, in a way, didn't. Did, uh, you know, it was a little bit of doubt, you know, a bit of uh, a change in plans from the coach. But one thing that never kind of um, went away was the amount of confidence, you know, that that the management team had, especially the players. I won't lie, we felt like, hey, we let each other down. You know, we never want to lose to the All Blacks, especially in the biggest stage. So you know, the coaches, especially Ross, you know, he just kind of led and said, the boys, don't worry about it. Yes. Um, uh, we did make mistakes today and, and there were lots of positives. You might not want to think that, but I'm telling you right now, he said in the dressing room afterwards uh, that we are going to win the World Cup. He said, I promise you, we are going to win this and we're just going to have to tweak uh, in our, our game plan here and there. And we did and we started that journey you know, um, after that to bouncing back. We played, it, uh, played Namibia, a great game against Namibia. And then Italy was a big one. So he told us that we... We pretty much have, um, we have, uh, uh, it was six games, six big games. Uh, it was uh, a story that to say this. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was pretty much uh, the Italy game. Uh, and it was uh, uh, the quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. Yeah, so actually, I'll make it four games. So, yeah, that's what he told us, you know, that this is the games that we got to target. And we just have to pitch up, you know, four times, four more times, you know, to give it your, you know, your all and you become a champion. Literally, your life changes you know, when you win the World Cup. So that's why we started focusing on, on those four big games. We gave, you know, we gave it everything. We relied on our, in our set piece, on our strengths. You know, as you know, South Africa, we like to bash everybody up. And that's what we did best. You know, we bashed everybody up front. And they just couldn't handle the pressure and the physicality. And we used that, you know, as a weapon. And then in that final, obviously, you know, after having to grind out a big win against Wales, uh, you know, England, you know, totally outplayed New Zealand. And everybody just kind of saw, um, you know, uh, England going all the way and nobody actually gave us a chance and uh, in a way you know we were so silently silently confident and uh, we just went about our business that week and yeah when uh, when that when, when that game came along and the English guys didn't know what hit them you know they, they were not expecting that kind of uh, you know um, obviously play from us and uh, we just totally you know outclassed them and uh, yeah pushed up in a big way in the final so Incredible. I, uh, I I was I had money bet on you guys. I, I knew you guys were going to beat England in the finals. There, you were just steamrolling teams. It was holy geez. It was so impressive to watch. Um, yeah. That was that's great. Like that's that's nice. And, and a couple other people we've had and spoke to about the same thing: the culture in Japan and how accommodating the Japanese were. And that's that's really great to hear as well. All right. So this next little section is just called tops, and it's kind of for both of you. So we're going to go back and forth. All right, so we'll start. We'll start with Doug because Doug hasn't had a chance to talk. Doug, what's your favorite, your favorite rugby tradition? My favorite rugby tradition, uh, probably uh, after you get a W, singing your win song and then having a beer with all the guys in the change room after. All right, ten day, same yeah. for you. Favorite rugby tradition? 
I don't think for me it's the, the camaraderie, you know, off the field, you know, off on the field, you smash each other, but the respect you show, you know, to your uh, opposition afterwards, uh, it's pretty cool that you can have a, you know, drink a beer and catch up and actually become friends for life. Yeah, yeah both, I um, love both those answers. Tende, back to you. Who's been the hardest to prop against? Uh, yeah, the hardest uh, uh, person I've spammed against this is probably Owen Franks because uh, we have kind of played against each other so many times so we, we just uh, developed this, really, you know, uh, this mutual respect and uh, yeah he's probably the most consistent scrummager I've ever you know um, yeah, went up against. Oh. Hey, Doug who's the toughest back to go up against? Oh, uh, toughest back to go up against would be Honestly, I'm like, I hate playing against Kieran Hearn, even though he's my teammate, but it's just like, it's playing against like a giant, like string bean, like who's so fast and incredibly strong. So I always find it hard to play against him. Fair enough. Uh, Tende, who, is your, who are your favorite second row players to scrum with? You've had uh, a number of great ones there, so. Yeah, no, but uh, probably a very easy one for me. Uh, even a little bit, uh, Probably one of my closest friends, and uh, yeah, you know, ha having him behind me kind of gives me like confidence to, you know, to flip and go up against anyone. Like, yeah, <laughs> my, my guy. <laughs> so, so, Doug, similarly, who who would you want with you on a two v one? On a on a two v one, um, honestly, I'd like to have. Uh, I'd like to have um, Declan O'Donnell just because he'd probably give me the ball back if I gave it to him and let me <laughs> score. <laughs> so I like, I like his unselfishness, man. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Ten day. Uh, I, I, I teach with a guy. He's from Australia, and he wanted me to ask you this. Who would be a number nine that you would want to smash the most? Or if not a number nine, any player. I mean, it could be Doug. It could be anybody. But we would focus on the nines, the yappy ones on the pitch. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm not even gonna pick a nine for this. I happen to not really like Dan Cole that much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, nah, uh, yeah. I kind of wish that maybe if I kind of you know still play rugby, runs in my channel. <laughs> I can see that. All right, Doug. Same question for you. I like that. Uh, it's always, I'm going to go the opposite route and go with a buddy. So I always like to get a good shot on, uh, on, uh, Connor Keys. He's playing for Atlanta now. So, um, yeah, that's probably my favorite guy to get one on. It's a bit easier for me. You know, I'm five, eight and he's six foot five. So I can get, get a little under him, but yeah, he's, he's my favorite guy to get a shot on. All right. That's good. All right. So we'll, we'll jump back to some more serious questions. So, uh, Growing up, I was a multi-sport athlete. I imagine you guys were. I played hockey, rugby, basketball, soccer, everything going. And it's something I really endorse here. But in Canada and the United States, it seems to be that kids are getting more mainstreamed into sports, like whether it's hockey, basketball, or football. But due to rugby's physical nature, the toughness, the emphasis on handwork, footwork, camaraderie, um, how does rugby help athletes become good multi-sport athletes? Is that is that something you would endorse, like multi-sport athletes? Or... Do you guys feel that you should only play one sport and that's it? Uh, you want to go first, Doug? <laughs> you, you, you can start off. You can start off doing that. Well, okay. look, do you want to ask a simpler one? Like, did you, what, what sports did you guys play growing up? Uh, yeah, so yeah, for me, um, I, I was uh, a basketball player. Uh, I'm not the tallest guy, but uh, <laughs> I'm really used to think of myself as a point guy, so I'm a huge NBA lover. Uh, and uh, I also did a bit of short put. A bit of uh, uh, sprinting you know, earlier on when I was like 16. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably about it. Okay. Doug, what about you? Yeah, I pretty much play odd for, for a Canadian, but I pretty much played everything I could touch other than hockey. So, uh, you know, I ran, you know, 400s, 800s in track, and then basketball, baseball, rugby, you know everything soccer big soccer guy when i was young as well so pretty much everything but hockey weirdly enough <laughs> okay so that there, it sounds really wide range so how do those other sports yeah. help help you guys get to the top of your your careers as rugby players do you think they did 
Yeah. I, I certainly think, uh, uh, you know, uh, basketball, especially, kind of gives you, you know, um, ball handling skills, but then also passing, you know, um, kind of just uh, elevates your skill level. So, yeah, I kind of, I really think it makes a, uh, it made a, uh, made a difference for me. I still play a bit of uh, game of pickup here and there, you know, a couple of friends. So, yeah, and I think it's, yeah, it's a great game for skills wise. You know, obviously, there's big guys that can move on the court, you know, with so much agility. So, I would say, yeah, definitely make a difference. And then athletics, obviously, my, the, the, the sprint, um, uh, work I did, you know, on the track, you know, working with, you know, uh, a lot of good coaches that kind of help me on my explosiveness and just obviously, you know, trying to kind of, you know, go move out there, you know, with, uh, so much flexibility and uh, kind of did add uh, a lot of value to my rugby career. That's great. Doug, how about you, bud? Yeah, yeah. Well, firstly, I wish we knew, uh, Beast, that uh, you're you're a bit of a baller back at DC because um, <laughs> we had a couple pickup games there at Catholic in the gym and uh, low key like real good, real good basketball player actually is Dylan Taikato Simpson. He, he is. He's a, he's surprising man. He's good. He's yeah. a baller man. Say Renz isn't bad, you know, but he, him and Danny both rely so much on their three point shot and it's very inconsistent. So I like to roll with uh, <laughs> my fly, the fly in Hawaiian Kina. Kina loves the. Run the pick and roll with me. We got that locked down. So, <laughs> so uh, well, we have a lot to do it next time. Yeah. Um, no, I, I pretty much I agree a lot with what uh, Tenda was saying, right? Like, I find, and I said this last time too, that you can draw so many correlations from different sports that you play and bring into rugby, you know. And I mean, like, it'll all be different whether you're back or forward too. But what I like, you know, from basketball is like the ball handling skills, your eye hand coordination, a lot about angles and running different angles to like, you know, for, try and find kinks in the defense. Um, I think are really important there. And then obviously being a back and coming from soccer, like having a lot of foot skills as well with the ball is like a really good translation too. Um, and like at different points in your career, right? Like at different ages, you play different positions. So playing baseball and being, a, I was a center fielder and, I played fullback for a little bit and it made my life catching the ball a heck of a lot easier having a little baseline of, uh, of training. Obviously the balls are different, but just having to judge the flight path of the ball is, is some, a skill that like not a lot of people just have naturally, you know, so being able to play baseball in a long time, um, that helps. Right. And I, I don't know, I feel like you can draw so many, so many things from every sport and, I think that's why a lot of people who are pretty good rugby players also played a lot of other sports and were half decent at it, or we like to say we were a lot better probably than we actually were. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm a good you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no judgment on my end. <laughs> All right. So ten days. So back to you. You played, you know, close to 160 Super Rugby matches. Over 100 test matches, which is an incredible feat. You played, uh, you went on a Barbarians tour, you were in three Rugby World Cups, you, you know, participated with the Lions tour. All at the same time, you're playing one of the toughest, if not the toughest position on the pitch. What's your secret, like, to your longevity and being able to play at such a high quality for so long? Is there one? Yeah, no, there's definitely a couple of secrets. But I, I think, um, you know, I'm probably the way I trained, you know, the way I was challenged myself to become better was the reason why I stayed at the top for so long. And um, I can tell you, like, in South Africa, it's very competitive. And, uh, you know, when I became a regular in the test match side, you know, guys that were upcoming would kind of target, you know, target me and say, hey, you know, I want this spot. And, uh, you know, that kind of just drove me to working even harder, digging deeper. You know, at the beginning of my career, I never used to play, play or pay a lot of attention to my diet and you know, my training regime. But I started doing it a lot more, you know, when I got to the age of 25. I started playing test match rugby when I was 22. So I started really, you know, focusing on how can I improve? How can I become quicker? And all of that stuff become more explosive. So, you know, I invested a lot of my training. Even got a guy who was working with me besides and our coaches. Um, the Sharks and the Springboks and, uh, you know, challenge myself, you know, from season to season. And, uh, you know, fortunately, you know, uh, thank God that I didn't have any uh, major injuries. Um, you know, I kind of just 
kept on playing and I think it was because uh, you know the way I trained you know I pretty much in a way covered myself I kind of I slick in and cut corners I probably would have caught an injury that would have hampered my you know progress but I, you know, I just kept on it and just working hard and uh, yeah man I guess that was my secret and uh, my recovery as well probably something that uh, you know a lot of young players don't really think it's something that's that's important you know I really paid a lot of attention in recovery after a game. I make sure that I'm in those ice baths. You know, I'm spending you know at least ten to twelve minutes in there. And then I, you know, I'm in the jacuzzi. I'm getting a massage. The next day, I even get an extra massage from another masseuse that I was seeing on the side. So all those things, you know, I just invest a lot. You know? <laughs> oh, what did you love on the side? The masseuse on the side. <laughs> I didn't get no. I didn't get no time massages, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to keep it in, and then I see Doug start to laugh. By the way, I never laughed. <laughs> oh man, it's hilarious. Man. We can we can we can revisit that story at a later time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to sum up, it's re it was recovery was a huge secret. Okay. Recovery was a huge secret. That's good. All right. So I, I stumbled across a quote from you the other day, ten day. And uh, I think both of you can talk about it, I guess, in your own aspects, one with the green and gold, one with the red and white. But your quote was something along the lines of, I'm a South African at heart. I love this country. It has become my home. It is everything to me. Wearing the green and gold of the spring box is a huge honor for me. That jersey is part of me. The green and gold flows in my blood. I feel just as much pride as any other guy on the team. Talk to us about the pride you felt putting that jersey on over 100 times. I think, um, you know, I never uh, a point in time that I feel like uh, it was never an honor, you know, to put on that jersey. You know, I kind of used to get up, you know, before every test match, you know, testify to it now, you know, I used to get goosebumps, you know, butterflies in my, my tummy because it meant so much for me to, to put on that jersey, you know. And, uh, you know, coming from Zimbabwe as a young kid, um, I probably might have, might have known uh, Jamie. Things are really tough there, you know, and uh, it's uh, you know, I'm, yeah, it's a poverty-stricken country, so I had to rise above a, a whole lot, you know, uh, you know a lot of circumstances around me. I had to like, you know, really work hard to kind of get there. So I, when I realized that dream, I never took it for granted, and uh, I just kept on wanting to prove, you know, my worth on the side. And I always wanted to show the, the amount of pride I felt, you know, even though I was from a different country you know when I put on that jersey I became one and those guys that were in the team were my brothers so it was a brotherhood and uh, yeah so every time when I put on that jersey I just wanted to play out of my skin and make sure that you know I don't think about the next game play every game like it's my last game and, you know before I knew it I played 50 games and then yeah you know I had that big goal of uh, trying to get to 100 test matches and uh, I remember there was a couple of times when I was in my 90s, you know, they called them the nervous 90s. And uh, <laughs> I, was like, you know, I was like stressing, am I going to get there? Am I going to get there? And uh, you know, it was so big, you know, because uh, I became the first uh, black African player to ever achieve such a milestone. So it was so huge, you know, there's a lot of things that were being spoken around it. So I just didn't let, you know, the, the hype and everything get to me. I just kept on with the work. So I knew that's how that's the only way I was going to get there by working hard. And uh, yeah, you know, and then next thing, you know, 117 test matches. And uh, yeah, it's an incredible journey. Man. It is. It's very incredible. And Doug, you're, you're closing in 117, right? Yeah, I think 115 off, give or take. Or, you know, I, don't, I don't even know where I'm at right now. But, yeah. no, but, but so, fair enough, though. But Doug, you, you've had a cup of coffee with Canada and putting that red yeah. white jersey on the first time. How thrilling was that for you? Oh, man. Yeah, I still remember it so clearly. Like, it was, I don't know, it felt like a lot longer journey for me, right? Like, whereas, like, Tend, I was in his team at 22 years old. I was 25, I think, at the time. And I was, like, pretty much on the borderline of, of kind of giving up rugby and, and call, like, uh, giving up my dream of trying to play professionally and play for Canada. And I was uh, kind of looking at just, playing rec, rec kind of rugby back home and, and looking for a job. But, <clears throat> you know, Kingsley came in and, and there was a bunch of changes um, as, as that 
came in and and I guess I was lucky enough to be one of them and um yeah I, my my first test was in Langford against uh Brazil there um and it it was uh it was most it was great because I gr I grew up like 45 minutes away from Langford right so my mom came down and my family came down and you know coaches and friends and you know I had a lot of people there and and it was pretty uh it was it was pretty great you know and I scored on debut which was pretty cool as well and um yeah like I'll, ne I'll never forget it and like one of my best friends I got to line up with the uh for for the anthem as well and he got his first cap the weekend before against the USA so yeah it was pretty it was pretty special and like you know a lot of the, the guys on the Canadian team are all have been or played in Victoria at some point so you get to know a lot of them and it, it's like like and I said right it's like a family it's like a brotherhood right and yeah just uh hopefully I can get a few more caps in before I'm done done playing but if not I'll be uh I'm pretty happy I got to represent my country as is so Great. yeah I think I put a put a pitch in there with for Kingsley for you though he he and I go way back <laughs> <laughs> all right so Tende you're, you're home in South Africa right now right oh you fine yeah. And you, you're now CEO of Um Lindy Securities. Is that right? Um Lindy? Uh, you say it a bit different, I uh, would guess. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's Um Lindy. Um Lindy. See, uh, that's what I was going to say, too, but Doug told me not to say it that way. I thought the uh, other was uh, yeah. <laughs> So talk to us about that. Talk to us about your role there. What's, what's happening with that company? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, besides playing rugby, uh, uh, I've always been involved in security. Um, uh, I was involved uh, in this company for about nine years, you know, so it, it kind of came by chance. Uh, it was uh, actually an a ex rugby player, a professional rugby player who runs this ticket company, and uh, he was just coming back, you know, to give, you know, to give back to the game, and he wanted to meet a few you know, young guys who he could mentor, and then now, uh, and then he obviously met me, and then he just liked me, liked my, you know, my brand and. What I had accomplished, they decided to use me in as a business for, you know, marketing. So I was doing a lot of ads, and uh, you know, uh, the guys used to tease me you know, because you know, that's like, that, like pretty, you know, funny. And, uh, yeah, but I, that's how this uh, association began, and then from there, he actually started teaching me about security industry, and he said, you know what, you can invest in time, in, you know, invest time in the business and see if this is actually what you want to do, you know, after you're done playing rugby. And I did, and he offered me shares uh in, in, the, in the business and then uh, from there I actually became one of the directors yeah so besides you know uh, me uh, playing rugby on the pitch i was kind of spending time in the office as well and just trying to you know prepare for life after the game it was like uh, quite a big focus for me so now that uh you know i'm pretty much coming close to the end of my you know, my career we always spoke about you know uh what i I want to get into and one of my my biggest dreams was to kind of have my own business you know, run my own company and he kind of understood that uh, you know, I'm, uh, way back and he said you know eventually when the time comes you know I'll, I'll make sure that you know I'll give you an opportunity and uh, yeah now this uh, Lindy company was actually a subsidiary to uh, to Fidelity uh, Services Group and then uh, yeah pretty much you know he gave me the ring and he said you know this is your opportunity now to grow this uh, this company and make it your own and obviously we've got our full backing so yeah it's a it's a massive responsibility and i got voted in as ceo at the first board meeting and uh, <laughs> i'm like geez how do i get my head around everything you know <laughs> <laughs> i have to make big decisions now so uh, <laughs> you, had to go back, you had to go for another massage after that i imagine <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I promise you, my, my massage is innocent, man. <laughs> I, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> so d does that mean you're you're officially retired? Do you, do you see yourself going back to old glory if COVID comes, you know, gets phased out? Or is that not, and not your thought process right now? I think for me, you know, I've had a lot of thought about this. And uh, I've actually been talking to the, to the guys at old glory, and, uh, just thinking about my role. You know, and with the club going forward, uh, the fact that it matters that I played a lot of rugby, you know, and uh, I just felt like, you know, probably this year would have been my last season. You know, I wanted to give my best shot and enjoy the journey, you know, with Doug and the boys and really go all the way and uh, probably beat San Diego. 
final. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, obviously COVID came and ruined everything. So, you know, I had to kind of like start thinking, ah, do I kind of want to maybe go again? Then I, uh, you know, made a decision to kind of, you know, stop for good, but I don't want my association to, to ever stop, you know, worry. Because the fact of the matter is that every article that's written about me now in uh, South Africa or even more, mentions that I was at all glory. So, and uh, the fact of the matter is that yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And uh, yeah, I know DC was a great spot, but uh, yeah, I, I hopefully we'll go back there and do some coaching like I was doing, you know, and just help out with scrumming, with the forward play, you know, hopefully that can happen, you know, going forward. And I also work with the inner city school kids. I had a cool thing going on with the Washington Youth Rugby, which was pretty amazing, you know, teaching these young kids about rugby that didn't have an idea who the heck I am. Mm. Hey, who's awesome. this dude? <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's this big giant guy covered in yellow? That's what the rugby is called, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So we only have a few minutes left. So I want to end with a, a quick fire segment. So basically, I've got about 10 questions and they're all kind of geared as to who is the best this, who is the best that. And I know you only played a few games together, but it can be kind of fun. All right. So I, I asked Doug before I got on 10 day, you know, about nicknames and he's got a few. So first question and the answer has to be one of you guys. You can either vote for yourself or you can vote for the other person. But who has the best nickname? Beast does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's world renowned. It's not even yeah, it's not even right. a contest. <laughs> no. Trademarked. Who has the most who has the most skill? Oh, definitely Doug. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> of the two of you, who's gonna stop a two V one? That's a good question. I'm going to go Tendai. No, I'm not going to go Tendai. He's a wig. <laughs> so he can look with me. You know, he's so quick. So, no, that's that. That's that. Yeah. Of the two of you, who's the best tackler? He says. I've seen him play some shots. <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched it. Watch it. I've seen a few. I've seen a few. I don't know. On YouTube and such. <laughs> like, no. yeah. I do, do got to ask. So, so Tendai, your, your beard's always looking good. You know, I'm getting old, so my, my goatee's getting some nice gray. Doug, have you been growing that since COVID started, or? <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I have, no. <laughs> like, I'm, uh, you, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just getting, uh, I'm just growing into a man, I think. I'm a little late bloomer, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Of the two of you, who would be the first to commit a knock-on? <laughs> I'm <I'm remember>, over, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> you're a prop i mean that kind of makes sense but yeah. 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 <laughs> of the two of you who'd be the first to get a card you know, probably you know. probably tend to only because he's a scrum scrummaging right yeah okay. yeah well, that so was that's, a, that's where i would that's a safe <laughs> answer yeah who gets in trouble with the coach more i don't think uh, I don't think either of us do. Yeah, I don't think. I don't. Um, I don't think Andrew's even gonna. Talk, he probably just lets Beast do his own thing. You know, he's a big dog on the block. So I guess. So I guess me then. If we're going, if we had to pick somebody, I would probably get mad at me before he gets mad at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. right. Who of the two? Of you, who's the fittest? Doug. Doug. Oh, uh, he was telling me some stories about you working out when you first arrived in Washington. Yeah, the guy jumps off the plane. He's right in the gym. <laughs> first thing he does, <laughs> starts giving out lessons and lifting. Like, Man, I'd be dead asleep. <laughs> that was crazy, yeah. That was crazy. <laughs> Who's the best at yoga? Doug. <laughs> probably, probably just a little bit. You know, yeah. he's got he's got a couple he's got a couple moons on me, right? Like him and. Him and old man Hearn and Appy up there, way up there. Like, I got a few years on him, so I'm a little bit more yeah, limber. Exactly. <laughs> who, has the, who has the best taste in music? Ooh. Then they, then they probably got some slamming hits. Hey, man, I'm like a part-time DJ, so. Hey, <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Fair. What, what do you, if, if I walk into your house, what are you spinning on the record player? Who? I'll be spinning some house music. I got some hip hop in there, man. Hey, I'm I'm all over the place. Whatever's <laughs> there. 
<laughs> All right. Tende, we'll go with you first. Netflix is going to make a movie about the beast. Who plays you in the movie of your life? Who plays me? Idris Elba. Come on. <laughs> Idris, I love Idris, yeah, Idris. Actually, you guys kind of look alike a little bit. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. He's taller, though. I think he's taller. <laughs> All right. Who would play the leading lady? Leading lady would be... Oh, uh, it would... How would be the leading lady? You think about that. Doug, who's playing in the movie about you? Uh, like, young Denzel. Young Denzel? Yeah. I asked you this one already, didn't I? You, you kind of yeah, did. I said Idris Elba, too. <laughs> That's then... right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beast, who's the leading lady? Who's the leading lady? Um, it would be Paula Payton. I got a cross with Paula Payton. My wife even knows it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. A few guys won't answer that question. They're a little scared. So, <laughs> Doug, who did you decide on? I double, I'll double down again on Rashida Jones, mostly because Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle is probably busy with with the prince and whatnot. So, yeah. so Rashida Jones, it is. is Fair yeah, enough. And my my girlfriend knows, so I'm the same boat as on this one. <laughs> All right, two left. Who gets in trouble at the pub more? Probably me. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy who like keeps things calm yeah. All right, so, so this might answer my last question cops come to break up a party who's getting picked up by the cops and who's getting away or, no. or cops come to break up a massage parlor who's getting picked up who's getting away <laughs> uh, you know, uh, <laughs> sorry that's the last time I know. <laughs> I think I could. I think I can hop. I can still hop a pretty good fence. Like I can get over some shrubs pretty quickly, you know. So I, I, I back myself in that scenario. You know, turned out he's a bit of a bigger character. They're gonna look around. Uh, I'm and be like, hey. I'm yeah, but he's running through them. He's running through them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, he's, he's the security company. He'll sort the whole thing out. I'll, I'll, just stay, I'll stay right behind him, man. <laughs> Well, well, listen, guys, I, I think we've come to the end of our time. Listen, uh, Tende, really want to thank you for joining us. I know you've got a, you've got a busy life there in South Africa. If you ever make it to the east coast of Canada, New Brunswick, uh, you know, hit me up and beers and Atlantic Lobster on me. I may regret saying that, but absolutely. I would uh, love to host and say it goes with you, Doug. Doug, you know, that's a standing order for you. So anyway, uh, appreciate you both coming on and, and enjoy C, uh, being the CEO of your company, and hopefully we see you back with Old Glory next year, whether it's in a coaching role or a playing role, I'd love to see that happen. And uh, Doug, same for you, can't wait to see you back on the pitch with Old Glory next year and uh, enjoy watching that MLR. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, Doug's a great guest. Love having Doug on. He's a pretty funny guy, very knowledgeable. Uh, just an excellent all-around character and a really, really strong rugby player, great rugby player there for Old Glory DC. And of course, thanks Doug for uh, introducing me to the Beast. Tende, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, what an absolute pleasure and thrill to chat with a, a recent Rugby World Cup winner. Uh, everything that you've done for rugby in South Africa and around the world, raising the profile of the game, um, you know, especially doing so from, from the loose end proposition, which is one of the toughest toughest positions to learn and play and you did it masterfully for 117 test caps uh, you know 160 matches with uh, with your home club in South Africa and uh, you know teaching teaching some of the lads over in Old Glory over here in North America the the ins and outs so thanks so much for coming on and being a part of the podcast uh, it's been a, it's been an honor um, you know it, it was very difficult to uh, to get uh, nailed down a time with 10 day and uh, Doug did a great job lining that up it, <laughs> we were we were kind of slotted in for an hour, but uh, ten days new business there, Umlendi. Uh, he he was a little tied up at work, and we had to start late. And then the guy's so busy that he had to we had to stop a little bit early because he had another meeting. So, you know, even with rugby down, he's actually busier now than I think he was when rugby was happening. But uh, we do appreciate both of you taking your time out of your day to uh, to have a chat with us here at the Canadian Rock. Coming up next, uh, you're, you're going to be excited too. We got Adam Kleberger coming on, 
um, famed from the Rugby Canada during the 2011 Rugby World Cup. So you have the beard craze started with Adam. Uh, then we have Jamie Cudmore, played a number of years for Rugby Canada, is now the coach of the Pacific Pride at West, who's a great conversation. And then after that, we, have, we also have Pam Buisa coming up, and uh, Pam talks to us about her young rugby career in the Seventh Circuit with Team Canada in uh, university, and uh, also the Black Lives Matter movement, which she is a big part of. Uh, COVID is, uh, you know, it depends on where you are in the world. It's uh, still running rampant through the United States and other areas, but uh, in Canada at the moment, knock on some wood here, we've, we're doing okay. You know, New Zealand's doing well because they've you know, they got full matches going on. Australia's got some games going. Um, but as always, I really like to say thanks to those essential workers, those that didn't stop, those that didn't get a break, those that didn't get to slow down and spend time with their family, but they, they worried about the rest of us. So thank you as always. Thanks to Ben Sound Music uh, for supplying us with their tunes. As always, feel free to request topics for future podcasts or guests, and we'll do our best to get them on here. And until, until the next pod, uh, this is Jamie, and I want you to stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane. Most importantly, keep on rocking. Mm-hmm.